Okay, so we have a pretty short lecture today because we've sort of set the foundation of everything already in chapter three, four and our previous lecture. So what we have so far is basically we have Y here, which is output. We have interest rate here. We have a downward sloping ice curve and we have a flat LM curve, which basically gives us the equilibrium. So at this rate of interest, this is how much our output is. So remember what this is. Every single point along the ice curve represent a different goods market equilibrium. So this point, this point, this point, this point, these are all goods market equilibriums. So suppose we are at point A and we move to point B. So we're at point A, there is a certain level of interest in the market and there is a certain level of uh, output, obviously. Now what happens is interest rate falls. If interest rate falls, what will happen? The first thing that happens is that investment goes up. If investment goes up, output goes up. If output goes up, uh, income goes up. When income goes up, consumption goes up. So a lot of things are happening. So effectively, what we expect to see is that we are at this point A, and for whatever reason, the interest rate falls. The falling interest rate is going to increase investment, increase consumption, and that is going to increase output. Both A and B are equilibriums. They're not equilibrium in the ISLM model, which is what we are looking at right now, but they're equilibriums in the goods market. Similarly, C, D, these are all equilibriums. And similarly, in the, in the LM model, uh, in the LM line, every single point, this point, this point, this point, this point, these are all equilibriums. So at each of this point, the financial market is in equilibrium. Uh, but once we are in looking into the ISLM model, what we also want to see is uh, basically an equilibrium in this model, in the ISLM model, which is obviously this point. At the point E, both goods market and the financial market in equilibrium, which is the equilibrium point of the ISLM model. If we're looking at point B, we just have the goods market in equilibrium, not the financial market. If we look here at point X, for example, the the financial market is in equilibrium, but the goods market is not. So, okay, uh, let me just see if I can get rid of all of this so that we can look at the diagram better. Okay, I think that will do. So, Suppose we are at this point, the economy has an interest rate of I naught and an output of Y naught, and we are at equilibrium point E. Now, what we are going to see today is how the government is going to use the I's and the LM relationships to regulate the economy. Before that, we need to talk about two things. One is the fiscal policy and the other is 
the monetary policy. So effectively the fiscal policy is when the government changes the level of government spending and or the level of taxation. Uh, to regulate the economy. And monetary policy is when the government changes the interest rate to regulate the economy. So these are the two of the strongest tools that the government has in trying to, let's say, control the economy. If they're trying to, but the government has different aims. They want to increase production. They want to create jobs. They want to incentivize certain sectors. Different governments have different goals. And to achieve these goals, the government makes use of either the fiscal policy or the monetary policy. The fiscal policy, basically is about the government's revenue or the government's expenditure. Government's revenue obviously is the tax rates. So the government can, in, can maybe increase or decrease the rate of tax to you know, have different impacts on the economy. And similarly, they can increase or decrease their expenditure to have specific impacts on the economy. And for monetary policy, I mean, we've talked about this already, I suppose, is when they increase or decrease the interest rate in the economy to make certain things happen. So once again, we're not going to look at this too in too much details right now because we have a chapter coming up in, the, in our medium run analysis, which is dedicated solely to fiscal policy and monetary policy. So we will do that right now. But for this chapter, chapter five and six, this 